Of course, there are lots of variations of the Sudi olive. I've seen it with a mullet wing, with a teal wing, with a pheasant tail wing, with an orange heckle, with a black heckle, and so on and so forth. The one I'm going to tie here has served me best over the last 35 years or so. April is a great month for the Sudi olive. I love using it on the point with a BBOS dropper. They are just a great team. Do we have to get out? Of course we do. Oh God, it's awful. Ideal conditions now. Absolutely awful it is. I've had my munch munch, now we can go and catch some fish. Oh God, look at this. Oh, wet. That's it, I do. You think? Yep. That little slug down there. Better than a minute. <sighs> the sooty olive is one of the better known traditional Irish patterns used mostly for lake trout fishing. I don't know anything about the place or time of origin. Sure is, Monster. it imitates a number Massive. of different species of chironomids, collectively known as duck flies or buzzers. Those are midges hatching in such great numbers that duck feed on them. Hence the name duck fly. <laughs> it could be a bit bigger, just a bit. <laughs> you see, this is the sooty olive. Ah. And it catches big, bigger fish as well. <laughs> Look at that. Very good. On the sooty olive. Hope it doesn't fall off. That's not a bad wee fish. Good. Hook sizes for the sooty olive vary from about 10 to 14. I have a size 12 here, which I think is a universal size for the sooty olive. Tying thread is black. Put that in. Tag as well as ribbing are made from copper wire. I prefer that to round tinsel or so because it adds more weight to the fly and makes it sink better. A propensity I like in a wet fly. That tag gets three or four turns. That's all. The tail is made from golden pheasant tippets. About eight or ten I take out of such a feather and tie them in here with a pinching loop. That looks right. Take that bit in the front out here. Now olive refers to the body. And I've got myself a bit of olive wool. Of course, if you have olive fur, you can use that. And I just pinch a bit out of this wool here. Between thumb and forefinger. And dub it around the hook shank. Twist it always in the same direction. And it'll stay on. And now, round and round she goes, until you have a body. Which hasn't to be slimline exactly. Can be a bit chunky. Leave enough space at the front. There are a few ingredients missing yet. I rib it with the copper wire. Three turns is just about right for this size of hook. Catch it, secure it and take it out. The hacker of the sooty olive is as black as the night and should have fibers, well a bit shorter than the hook is. So this one fits that description. 
I take the fluff off and cut myself a wee brush out to clean the eye hole with later. Just like that. Now some fly tires prefer a false heckle here, meaning just a few fibers tied backwards, but I like this proper heckle, so I give it three turns or so, like that. One more. So, catch it, secure it, and take it out. As simple as that. The wing I prefer for the Sooty Olive is made from mullet wing feathers and I've got myself one here and I just tear a few fibers out of this very easy and fold it between my fingers actually it folds itself somehow and you have a wing a pair of wings so to speak and I put that here on top of this and tie it in with a pinching loop. So, and there we have a winged fly. The only thing missing now is the knot. Okay. Take the tying thread out and varnish this thing. When I say varnish this thing, I mean the knot and the knot only because the varnish should not get in contact with the hacker fibers or the wing. Doesn't look nice when they are glued together. Now my feathery brush shall help me cleaning this eye here. And there we have a sooty olive.